So if you're on the fence about buying a magazine fed shotgun, this video is for you. Basically, my thoughts, now remember this is all my opinion, on a magazine fed shotgun that would excel if and only if you were going to make it a primary weapon. Then you'd set up a full chest rig, you'd have all your shotgun magazines across it. Yeah, I can see that. But for me at least, a shotgun is a very, very, very niche tool that excels in a very niche situation. So for me, I would never even consider making a shotgun a primary weapon, so therefore I would never have a chest rig set up for it. So it really kind of deters on what kind of shotgun I would want. Because with modern technology, how good AR-15s are, hell, maybe even a lever action or a scout rifle, they are all going to outperform a shotgun. A shotgun dominates within 50 yards. Realistically, probably within 30 yards. With inside 30 yards, they're arguably the best weapon you can have just because the amount of firepower it brings to the table. So, because I will never make a shotgun a primary weapon for me, it's just going to be in those niche situations, I need to do a couple of things. I need it to be light, I need it to be easy to store, and I need it to be very simple to use. I need it to be as simple as a club. Nothing complicated about it, as simple as can be. Now, I have watched competitive shooters use a magazine-fed shotgun pretty effectively. But they used it because a shotgun is so low a capacity if you're not shooting, you're loading. That's just the way it works. So what they did with their magazine-fed shotguns, they were just covered in five-round magazines. I think he had two tens, one on each side. But this particular course was designed to burn you out on the shotgun. You fired a lot of rounds. It was something crazy. It was like, I'm exaggerating here, but it was like 80 rounds fired. And they had the course set up so like, There'd be two or three targets, and then you'd have to run to this other area, and there'd be like five targets, and then you'd have to run to this other area, and there'd be like two targets, and you run to this other area, and there's like three targets. So basically, with that particular magazine-fed shotgun, even if he only fired like two rounds, he had to change out the magazine. But he did run the course effectively. He had more loaded rounds on the ground than he had empty rounds on the ground, but still... He still ran through it effectively. Now, did he run it faster than other <coughs> tube-fed shotguns that are set up for competition? No. You see, I had run competition, and I didn't actually make competition guns. I had went there with just the guns I had decided were going to be good combat guns, which pretty much revolved around the Magpul videos and the tactical response videos, so they seriously got changed after I ran them. But anyway, I got shoved into open class because my shotgun had a ported barrel and my AR-15 had two sighting systems. I had a EOTech with a magnifier on it, which I just seen Military Arms Channel and he doesn't like magnifiers, so I'm going to get one in and make the case why they're awesome because he didn't touch on any of the positives to it. But anyway, so I was deemed open class, which made me want to cry for two different reasons. If you're in open class, your guns don't run. And I mean that. The people in open class, their guns are always broken. So I knew my guns were going to break. Two, the people that can actually get their guns to run, at least for the length of a the course, they're going to show you how completely bad you suck. So it's kind of a real hard hit on the ego. I mean, even my AR went down. I had used a clamped on gas. Uh, before I believed in, or strongly believed in, pinning gas blocks, I wanted a flat gas block and I wanted one that looked good so the first one I ran was a clamp gas block heated up shifted brought my AR down so then I'm like well I'm gonna run a set screw gas block I ran that shifted brought my AR down so then I had to drill in the barrel so I can actually drive the set screws into the barrel and then just coat the whole thing in Loctite and then she held up but before that point yeah even my AR went down well anyway there was someone there like I said with a Sega 12 one I asked them you know particular questions about it because this thing was highly modified like what he had in it he said after making it run and setting it up the way he did he had about three thousand dollars into it which that's expensive that's real expensive but anyway it was that particular course too where i stopped justifying ghost ring sites yes when i bought my shotgun immediately after going to the range i hated ghost ring sites because i'm like this is making you slower but I was like, 
Well, you get a fiber optic front sight, so that makes it easier to pick up. So that, that takes up some of the slack for the speed. And then the rear sight's adjustable, so you can just dial in. So if you're gonna make slug shots, you'll be more accurate. But then I'm like, well, this is a niche weapon. I'm not gonna have multiple types of ammunition. Maybe I might have a slug in my back pocket or two for like breaching a door or something like that, but why can't I do that with buckshot? There's absolutely no reason not to run buckshot in this. Unless, of course, it's your primary weapon. Now, if it's your primary weapon, yes, by all means, have slugs, be able to switch up ammo, because that's what makes the shotgun super special for a primary weapon is the firepower and the ability to switch ammo. So anyway, running the course, and because you have to break your head position so often and reload, you, you're always fighting to get your sights to line up. Eventually, I got to the point where I was just so burnt out, I just started instinct shooting. And my accuracy dropped by like 30%, but it didn't matter. Making a follow-up shot and re-engaging the target that I missed, it was faster. Like, I didn't even mount my head. I just looked above the shock on an instinct shot. It was faster than trying to find my sights. And that was the point in time where I'm like, no, there's absolutely no reason to ever have any sort of sighting system on a shotgun except for a bead sight. They are completely slow, they are ridiculous, and why the military has them on a shotgun when they're only allowed to use buckshot makes absolutely no sense. Now a law enforcement officer I can kind of see ghost ring sights. So anyway, that's when I went on the quest of, I'm against ghost ring sights. So, you want your shotgun easy to store. Obviously to have a heat shield because it's going to get hot. And if you're doing reloads, especially if you do this type of reload, you're going to want to protect your hand from getting burnt, otherwise it's going to make reloading even harder. And then you have it already in that position. So basically, you'd be using the AR, and then if you hit that position, now instead of being trapped, claps your stocking on the AR, sling that bad boy to the back, or if you've got a single point, just let it dangle on your chest, grab your shotgun. The ammo's already there, shotgun's already loaded, Grab a couple of boxes, fill up your pockets. You wouldn't actually set up just for a shotgun. So then, let's say they're making an advance on you, this will put the brakes on their advance. Now you could run a sling on this, so like, okay. Got it slung on your back because you stopped the advance or something, but you haven't left the position, now you need to use it again, and you can go back into work. You won't want to run a single point sling on this for two different reasons. One, if you run the single point sling on the side and you actually have this set for your proper length of pull, when the shotgun recoils, it slams that into your face. This actually happened to me, it split my lip very bad. Second reason, if your AR is on a single point sling, which it probably will be, it'll be dangling in front of you. So then you'd have to remove your AR to switch back to the shotgun. And this is just supposed to be temporary. This is just supposed to hold that position. Because let's pretend like, okay, they're moving in on you, unless, of course, they got flashbangs and stuff. They can't get past the door, unless they're just some crazy good ninja that uses, like, smoke and mirrors and somehow gets in the door and aiming at you before you can get at them. Now, even if they use a flashbang, because it's a tip. When I watch the training videos, they, like, throw it in. Sometimes as soon as it goes off, they'll come in the door and sometimes there'll be a slight hesitation. But if I get flashbanged, I'm just going to keep shooting at the door until my shotgun's empty. Hopefully they'll decide not to come in. But they're probably going to come in anyway and I'm probably going to die. But at least I'll get one or two of them to come with me. And then as soon as you leave that position, you ditch the shotgun. Also, because I had watched all those Magpul videos and tactical response videos... On my shotgun, I had side saddles. Also not a fan of those because they work like <laughs> Basically, if you put your shotgun shells in upside down, which makes it easier to load, by the time this tube is empty, your side saddle is going to be empty. All those shells are laying on the ground. So what's really the point? The only place where I could see them excel is if you want to do a slug changeover, say for a reason this is your primary weapon, and you're like, okay, I want to use a slug here and pull the slug off then go to work, but those slugs aren't going to be there if you wind up burning a full tube of ammunition. Now, you can put them in this way, which makes them much harder to use, and they won't fall out with a, within one tube full of shooting, 
but you put like two or three tubes through it because I ran that course. And I'm like, okay, at the end here, I'm just going to pick from my side saddle because you had to run birdshot through almost all the course, but then at the end you had to run buckshot. I believe they did that just so you can practice your changeover. So anyway, get to the end of the course, go here, no shotgun shells there. Go here, there was one shotgun shell left, barely hanging on by a thread. So I was able to use that one, but then when you're using a side saddle, it's really weird. And since this ain't a primary weapon, who really cares? You grab your box of ammo and just throw them in your pocket, or you'd set them up on the table. If they're set up on the table, do your reload. If they're in your pocket, grab out two. You just glance at them, see how they're oriented. As long as you don't have a load gate, this will work. If you have a load gate, this ain't going to work. Drop your first one in, and come with the second. Not the fastest, but it'll work so you can just pick out of your pocket, and then you don't have to set up a chest rig. I think I'm topped off, actually. So that's why I don't like magazine-fed shotguns. Now, again, if it's your primary shotgun, your primary weapon, that makes sense. And there would be a couple of scenarios where you'd have it as a primary weapon, like... Say you're in a team, well, probably not even in a team. They'd probably have your shotgun as a secondary and you'd still carry a rifle. Well, let's say you lived in a high-rise apartment. You That would make sense to have a shotgun and a chest rig set up as a primary weapon. And then you had a rifle and a chest rig, separate chest rig set up in the trunk of your car. And you just had to get to the car because then you used your shotgun because inside like a high-rise building, they would absolutely be devastating. Then you get to the car, rip off the shotgun, rip off the chest rig, put on the new chest rig, grab the rifle. Now, it should be noted. One, I'm not a serious competitor. Two, I'm not an operator. So if you're one of those people that only take advice from serious competitors or operators, you can just go ahead and forget everything I said. What I am is practical. What is and what is not practical? For me... A magazine-fed shotgun is not practical. Yeah, it makes sense if you're going to have like 20 rounds, but you wouldn't want 20 rounds. Because how many shotgun shells can you honestly carry on you? If you have some sort of magazine issue with a 20-rounder and you ditch that off, what are you losing? Like half of the shotgun shells you have on your body? It doesn't even make sense with ARs and AKs. If I have a problem with this and I have to strip the magazine and just ditch it, I'm losing maybe 10% of my ammo. Now you're probably like, well, a full battle loadout, that's 700 rounds, that's even less than 10%. So if I had a 100 round drum, I'd only be losing like a seventh of my ammo, but that's not realistic. If you had a full chest rig, full battle loadout, which I don't even know how many magazines that is, but it's a lot. You can't even bend over to tie your shoe. We're not in the military. You have to be able to carry your kids, open doors. This is just... A uh, whoops, things went sideways. I need to interact. So the actual ammunition you're going to have on you is probably going to be 300 rounds or less. Now, when we're talking about very realistically speaking, especially after January when I'll have another child, what can I honestly carry on me for AR ammo? Probably two, maybe three magazines. Because I got a lot of crap to carry. Shotgun shells after January... Probably a maximum of 20. So all that high speed moving really quick shooting just da 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 da, da is just not going to be possible for me. If I make a shot, it needs to be a single shot. It needs to be effective. And that's also why the AR would be my primary weapon. Out of all the ammunition out there on the civilian market, if I have to scavenge ammo, I'm most likely to find AR-15 ammo. So having a 100 round drum and having to strip that bad boy out, there goes a large percentage of your ammunition. Having a 20 round drum and having to strip that boy, bad boy out, there goes probably pretty close to half or maybe a quarter of your shotgun shells. I just don't see the point in having that many eggs in one basket. So anyway, tube fed, no ghost ring sights, no pistol grip, Put it where that will excel, leave it there, and that's where it's going to be used. 
Thanks for watching. If you'd like to check out any of my other videos, click on the links up here. Don't forget to subscribe.